Hey, Stephen Gay, Mick here from the Upcut Tell Podcast. Just a quick message to say, really enjoying the podcast, guys. Keep up the good work and look forward to hearing further podcasts. Cheers. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Stephen. Let's grab a drink. Welcome in. What is going on, everybody? Your best boys are back for another great round. We are here for round 20. Thank you to Mickey from the Hop Cartel Podcast for reaching out to us. Always good to hear from another beer podcast in the industry. And uh, if you like our podcast, check them out uh, and check out their page on Instagram. He has a lot of dope glassware that I'm really jealous of. Takes beautiful pictures of beer, and he is a home brewer. Um, and uh, reached out to us to show some love, and we're showing it back. Thank you so Hell much, yeah. sir. Uh, from Australia, by the way. Um, Tell uh, Hugh Jackman we said it was good. Just the only Australian thing we could think of. <laughs> totally. Kangaroos and whatnot. Moving right along, though. <laughs> this round, we are drinking out of good old Salt Lake City, Utah, Uinta Brewery. That's right. You has got some really great beers. Yeah, I'm excited for this because this opens up a great conversation that we can have about Utah's beer laws. Because as someone who lived in Utah for a brief summer, yeah, uh, I have some questions, but we'll get into that. Uh, I don't have any answers. <laughs> we'll get into that, but uh, first we should get into uh, some news and notes and find out what's happening in the world since last we spoke. Um, the biggest news and notes we got right now, the week we are currently living in, it is National Craft Beer Week. You what mean right is, now? You mean right now? I mean right now. We you mean today? May 11th to May 17th, National Craft Beer Week. <laughs> so that sounds like a hope, reason to party. It's, it's always a reason to party. So we hope everyone is uh, celebrating as best they can uh, with a beer in their hands and love in their hearts and... You know, masks on their face, masks on their face. I was, thank you. I was looking for something. I was looking for a third ringer. And you, I know. You, I could hear that there was like, it's like, ah, oh, I got we were something. at a plateau and we needed to come down the mountain. <laughs> I, I appreciate you, sir. <laughs> no problem. Uh, but yeah, we are uh, definitely here celebrating all week long. Um, but to celebrate good old craft beer week, we are checking into craft company, a Boston based beer craft event company is basically launching virtual beers with brewers it's a live stream guided tasting giving viewers the opportunity to learn about and interact with and support the breweries in their communities and whatnot uh to celebrate the week craft company is hosting brewers that started the modern craft beer revolution harpoon brewery ceo and co-founder dan keenery will be featured on Tuesday, May 12th, and Brooklyn Brewery co-founder Steve Hindi will be featured on Wednesday, May 13th. Uh, Leading up to each live stream, Craft Company is announcing four beers they'll be tasting so everyone can purchase the beers and participate. It's going to be a fun time. It's going to be filled with laugh and cheer and beers galore. Laugh, cheer, and beer, oh my. Uh, So uh, get your hands on some of this beer and check it out. It should be a fun fun way to do it you can uh find them on their live on instagram uh their handle is at craft company uh 7 p.m each night uh like we said with different beers so at crafted company there's like a d snuck in there so don't crafted yeah craft crafted with no e crafted (laughs) crafted in other news i am so excited about this story um so uh, last week I, I I saw red a little bit and had a little bit of a freak out moment because we were drinking Dos Equis and I found out that they put corn syrup in their beer. Well, it turns out, believe it or not, Gross. I know this will be shocking to our listeners, but I'm not the first one to have noticed that. Uh, <laughs> and Anheuser-Busch actually, um, Molson Coors actually sued Anheuser-Busch because in 2019 during the Super Bowl, Anheuser-Busch's ad campaign pointed out that Miller's Coors, Miller Coors, now Molson Coors, used corn syrup in their brewing process. 
Coors mm. sued them because they said this was false advertising, insisting that a list of ingredients differs from the finished from what the finished product contains, which is the most mind blowingly stupid thing I've ever heard. Yeah, that just sounds wrong. No, we put I, it in the beer, but it's not really in there. You shouldn't tell people. Yeah, I feel like they were just hurting for a response. So Molson Coors doesn't like that. Anyway, uh, well, a, jo- a, a federal judge this week issued a ruling in the case, uh, and U.S. Circuit Judge Frank Easterbrook of the Sen- Seventh Circuit uh, determined that Anheuser-Busch is allowed to keep shitting on Molson Coors. He said, and this is a direct quote, uh, if Molson Coors does not like the sneering tone of Anheuser-Busch's ads, it can mock Bud Light in return. I, I So I, he basically just opened the field to a just all-out yeah. shootout, pretty much. I love this guy. I love that this guy is in federal court like, if you don't like it, shit on their beer right back. And honestly, that he would just straight be... straight up is just like, <laughs> I don't drink it. I don't give a shit. That would be just such a beautiful battle of the bastards. Um, but I would, I, I just I would can't kill for that. I can't get past the fact that they put corn syrup in their beer. I'm not going to rant about that again. But then the fact that somebody called them on it, and then they would have the balls to turn around and go, "No, we put it in our beer." But <laughs> yeah, that's not fair to say that it's actually in there, even though we put it in there. What we you put s- it in our beer, but like we don't like put it in the beer. Like, what are you claiming? That the corn syrup was burned off in the brewing process? Because I'm here to tell you, I tasted one of your beers last week, and it wasn't burned off, Molson Coors. Get at me. That sounds like shots have been fired. Shots from were good old Los Angeles. Shots were just fired. Anyway, um, just a fun little piece of news that I, I really, <laughs> I just had, how could I not bring that up? Anyway, what else is going on? Dude. Dude, check it out. New Belgium Brewing launches Voodoo Ranger 1985 IPA, dude. That's right. You heard Tubular. it here folks, first, folks. Um, the classic Voodoo Ranger by New Belgium, which has been doing very well in the craft beer sales uh, portion of the world. Um, they are launching a new twist to the Voodoo Ranger, which is a rotating IPA series, by the way. I did not know that. But um, they're coming out with the 1985 IPA. Hazy, like the mid-80s were for most of us, this IPA (laughs) is like totally loaded with juicy mango freshness. And that is a direct quote from the company. High in flavor, low in bitterness at 6.7%. That's not bad. Uh, It's an easy drinking beer with the perfect addition to your summer wardrobe. For those of you who know what the can of the Voodoo Ranger looks like, it's the skeleton man. Well, he's all decked out in the Kanye shades and the hipster hat and the awesome jacket with a fanny pack. How would you not want to party with this guy? Um, But this is looking toward a summertime beer. Um, Looks really cool. It is now New Belgium's fifth best-selling brand. Um, The 1985 IPA is the newest release in the series. It is bursting bursting with juicy mango, pineapple, and guava flavors and aromatics. So check out the Voodoo Ranger 1985 edition IPA hitting stores soon. Let's get it. And finally, uh, Sierra Nevada hits the news section once again. Uh, They have announced that they're helping their uh, local hospital ramp up um, some COVID-19 testing. We have heard of breweries uh, shifting their production facilities to make hand sanitizer and help in other ways. Um, And Sierra Nevada is doing something a little different. Uh, they are helping the Chico, California based Enlo Medical Center, which is uh, local to the brewery, uh, by producing viral transport medium in its brewery lab. What this is, uh, viral transport medium or VTM, is this mixture that preserves clinical samples like swabs uh, and things like that so that they can be tested. It's a, a necessary mixture. Um, that they need to ramp up COVID testing, and Sierra Nevada regularly produces uh, this or a variety of this um, in their lab already to test their beer and do quality assurance and things like that. So the brewery lab has uh, begun to kind of shift uh, and uh, begin production of this viral transport medium uh, that they can uh, supply to their local hospital. So a really cool uh, kind of selfless act um, by the brewery. They're certainly not getting um you know 
paid for this or anything. It's just a, it's just them doing their part uh, because our boy Ken Grossman, we talk about him a lot. And Kenny he's, boy! He's the man, uh, and they have the equipment, the expertise uh, to to help out, and so they're, they're doing what they can. Uh, hopefully something that we can see other breweries with the means uh, do as well because these are places that... You know, it doesn't. It it's not a huge shift in their production line to to shift to something like this. So it's it's helpful. And uh, Sierra Nevada, we continue to love you. We love you. We appreciate you. And we drink your beer. Speaking but not of today. Beer. Not today. Today we're drinking someone else's beer. Now, you into brewing is in Salt Lake City. As I mentioned, I've spent three months in Utah. They have very bizarre liquor laws in in utah and salt lake yeah. city uh you into brewing is is uh a brewery doing what i would consider to be the lord's work in uh, the devil's state it's uh <laughs> i was gonna say no pun intended but you they to it. it's, they are it's robin so hooding fun. hardcore in oh, utah yeah. and um you know there's a, a very prevalent religion in utah that uh limits the use of alcohol and i think of you into as kind of just just thumbing their nose or 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 middle fingering it hardcore and i mm, it's inspiring to me so uh as a um as as an ode to that i guess uh i'm going to read from the Ooh. book of mormon <laughs> nice with a malaise of irony and i'm going to read to you the exact doctrine that prohibits mormon people from drinking alcohol this is going to be so much fun to drink afterward according to the word of wisdom which is a series of laws laid down in the book of mormon that inasmuch as any man drinketh wine or strong drink among you behold it is not good neither meet in the sight of your father only in assembling yourselves together to offer up your sacraments before him And behold, this should be wine, yea, pure wine, of the grape, of the vine, of your own make. And again, strong drinks are not for the belly, but for the washing of your bodies. Hey, Stephen. I couldn't disagree more. Do you want to hear my response to that? Yeah, yeah, I do. That's my response. I'm going to keep drinking. Same here. Take that. Uh, I mean, you know, no, no shade. But your liquor laws. Y- you should just look at that. That's all. That's all we're saying. Just, just, just look at that. Hey, Ted. Can we get a rewrite? Right. I'm just so, hung up on the washing of your bodies thing. Like, what are we supposed we, to do? P- wash our bodies in, in wine. beer and People, wine? Hey, listen, Amari Stoudemire, uh, NBA form, former NBA basketball player, takes red wine baths. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me how it helps him in life, but he does it, and he seems happier for it. I mean, it sounds um, worth a shot. I mean, I'm all set. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like literally all set, and so... I say we just consume it like the 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 book says we should. We are going to dive right into the beer of good old Uinta. We are starting off with a shared beer that we were both able to get our hands on. This is the Baba Black Lager. Um, from the description we've gotten, it has flavors of dark coffee, chocolate, and subtle wood smoke. Um, our Black Sheep's color stands out and leads the herd in drinkability. It is coming in at 5% ABV, IBUs of about 38. On the SRM chart, what are we looking at, Stephen? It is pretty much jet black. 52 is technically yeah. what it is. Um, yeah, I can't. I mean, I Very can't dark. see through it. It's not hazy at all but it's it's opaque in that it's it's dark dark brown if not jet black i mean there's a little bit of like a ruby glow to it if you hold it up to the light like i guess around the edges but uh, i've got a fun retained head on mine um i see you've got one as well a little bit of stickiness lacing yeah it collapses pretty quickly um 
but it's sort of a nice foamy head. No lacing for I mean, I'm not seeing any lacing down the glass. It's pretty clean. Um, oh yeah, definitely smells like chocolate. This be yeah, this beer. I mean, what they're going for here um, is drinkability. So it's it's presumably going to be uh, a nice crisp um kind of refreshing take on the style of a black lager uh on the nose i immediately got chocolate yeah i got roasted i got chocolate at first it kind of uh relaxed into like a roasted coffee thing but there is a there is a um there's like a sweet thing going on there there's like some like maybe it's licorice or like dark dark plum there's like some kind of like subtle dark fruit in there too. Yeah, me. a little bit. Um, I'm hoping that comes out in the taste of it rather than the nose. And with that, let's get this bread. It is a little sweeter than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's like um, <clears throat> the the coffee and roasty malts hit you up first. Um, there is a grain bill of uh, caramunic carafa and chocolate malts in there, so definitely get that roasted dark malty backbone but there's a wow. uh a sweetness in there there's like dates figs um yeah the back end feel like the aftertaste is very very strong i would argue even a little stronger than like once the beer goes down it, it really lingers and i really like that it's got a sense of it, it tastes like a very fancy like somebody spent like a 10 full minutes making this perfect cup of like coffee mm. you know what i mean like yeah you don't go to a coffee shop they pour it in a cup and hand it to you like they they froth the milk and they 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 pour the milk in and it makes the that tree design which i don't understand how they do that but it's a beer and it's easy to, it is really easy to drink it's um as it warms in your mouth like there is like a spiciness to it and acidity to it kind of what you would expect from uh, from like a Czech logger. Um, one beer advocate user said, <laughs> uh, tasting notes of soy sauce. And I, I have questions oh. for that, man. I, mm. I, I have Wouldn't to say all that. I have to disagree with you, sir. Um, not to, not to my palate. Maybe you taste things that I just don't get, but, uh, <laughs> cause I'm not getting that. Ain't no soy sauce in there. But there's a sweetness to it. I mean, I would say it's like a, a caramel or like a maybe even like a like a light melon or something. It's hiding behind the maltiness. I will say the hops that are in there, which are Hallertau tradition and Sterling hops, don't taste them at all. Barely present, like very, very subtle. Yeah, they are subtle, but like I kind of don't hate that. You know what I mean? Like I feel like yeah. it adds to it. Um, Beer Advocate give it an 85 untapped gave it a 3.55 so pretty high scores for each i'm only getting a very subtle very very little bit of the sweetness but it is present it's, it's not, there. not there it's in the back like it it settles into a, a kind of acidity so it's not just hitting you in the face like it's not this isn't a coffee stout it's not just hitting no, you in no, the face no. with like creamy coffeeness it's not that like luscious uh dark roasted flavor the whole time some of that is in there but uh, the body is lighter. Um, it's pretty well carbonated. Um, I feel like, call me crazy, part of me wants to just like take a shot of Bailey's and throw it in. Is that wrong? Uh, it's not, not wrong. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> if it's wrong, I don't want to be right. But I don't know. It's just, it's got that vibe. Uh, it's very, like Gabe said, very drinkable, um, you know, low yeah. ABV, sessionable. Uh, this beer won five beer awards, including a silver medal at the Schwartz beer category uh, at the Great American Beer Festival in He couldn't wait to say that word. Schwartz beer. Schwartz beer. Schwartz beer. <laughs> oh, we are so stupid. Uh, the judges at... <laughs> The judges at Beer Connoisseur scored it a 92, which is higher than the Beer Advocate users and the Untapped users, but they did give it a fairly glowing review. And I think it's because um, it is sessionable, it is clean and crisp and drinkable, but it is more assertive than most dark mm. lagers because of, I think, that 
sort of spicy thing I was talking about. It's like it's not yeah. very present, but it, there's an, an acidity in there that's like it kind of gives you a little a little zing that makes you go, "Ooh, what's Ooh. that hiding in my beer?" For beer connoisseur, because funny you mentioned that, I looked into that as well for the beer I'm drinking, and I saw you did that as well. Like, how did they categorize this beer? Did they just, <clears throat> excuse me, did they just categorize it as a black lager, or did they? Yeah, I mean, I think that they categorized this as a Schwartz beer. I know they did. They Yeah, they called it, it the Schwartz beer. That's the category for it. And the Schwartz beer style, it originated in Germany. It's a dark lager, which this is. Um, tends to be opaque, black in color, hints of chocolate and coffee flavors. I mean, pretty much it's this. So this, yeah. <laughs> like that, but that's the technical term for what it is. But it, uh, if you couldn't tell from the name, I'll say it again. It's Schwartz beer. Uh, and that comes... Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? From Germany. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was feeling it. <laughs> Why is this so easy to drink? Um, I, I don't ABV, get it. Clean. Uh, you don't taste the alcohol at all. You don't taste not at all no. hops. There's nothing really you know bitter about it. It's kind of like drinking like a nice cold pressed like iced coffee. Yeah, in a way. That's, I think that's why I like it so much. Yeah, like you into if you handed if you handed me this in the morning to start my day, I probably wouldn't hate it. You into brewing. Here's the thing. I, so I, I have been a fan of Uinta for, for a while. I mentioned, I so I spent a summer in Utah. It was summer of 2015. He was doing, he was and, doing community service, court <laughs> order. And it was it's beautiful. I mean, Utah is beautiful. Uh, the place I was working was absolutely beautiful. Amazing people. I, everything about it is great. Uh, the It is a very... I mean, it's our country's only functioning theocracy, and along with that comes very strict liquor laws. So, like when I was moving out there, everyone was like, "Are you?" I mean, that's like a dry state. Are and you, I thought, "Are you gonna be okay?" <laughs> yeah, literally. And I go, "A dry state." And I looked it up, and there was a Buffalo Wild Wings in the town I was going to. And I thought, "Well, their slogan is beer, wings, sports." I mean, how bad could this be? <laughs> so, mm. so I moved out there, and you know, there's there's beer in all the grocery stores and I I'm walking through a Walmart looking at beer and I'm looking at like normal beer. Like, I mean, I'm talking bud Corona Mm -hmm. shock top goose Island. I mean, all this like normal stuff and it all says on it, like the ABV is 3.2% and I'm going 3.2%. Three point two percent. I'm like Goose Island that's, is not three point two percent. Yeah, that's that ain't correct. That's not like what is going on here. Well, come to find out that in the state of Utah, to be considered beer, the product has to be less than four percent alcohol by volume. So all the beer there, and or it's something to do with three point two. Like it can't be on tap if it's more than four. But like all the beer is three point. So all these major beer companies brew different versions of their beer to for utah distribute in utah so like my parents had gone on vacation to utah and my dad's like i don't think that's true in restaurants because i had beer on tap there and it and i was like no i promise you and like you you wouldn't know like if you order a beer on tap you don't know the difference because it just shows up in a glass nobody's asking nobody's looking it's just beer that's handed to you and you pay the same price you do in you know Anywhere else in the world, not New York, but wherever. Yeah, I was just about to say. Mm. <laughs> but it's it's watered down that beer. Sucks. It's just that's, so bizarre. So that's that's that hurts my soul. So I find this out. I mean, I'm in a you know I'm in a Walmart. It's like my second day there. I'm looking at all this. Beer. I'm pulling every beer off the shelf. But I'm like, no, 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 this can't be true. Yeah, it's like a horror movie. <laughs> and I'm like, there's like horrible pains running through my body. I'm like, I'm here for oh, three months. Yeah. What am I gonna do? Uh, come to find out they do have normal beer in Utah. It's called quote unquote full beer and it's considered hard alcohol. You can only get it at the liquor store and they only have state run liquor stores. There's like one per town. So like, it's fine. Like that you can get it. You It's fine. Yeah. But it's just like, good to know if you go to Utah and you have beer on tap or if you're in a restaurant or whatever, you have to ask for full beer. Like you can't get a beer on tap at all. I didn't have a beer on tap for three months. Seems so that. Seems oh trivial God. now so, because we're in quarantine and I probably won't for 
Yeah. Um, but that, uh, that to me just makes me think like, okay, if, if you've lived in Utah your entire life, like are they all just lightweights? Like if you hand them a double IPA and they have three they, sips, are they going to well, be hammered? Here's the thing. Like a lot of them, because, you know, yeah, they don't know the difference. I mean, and a lot of them don't drink. So, I mean, I went into a um, convenience store and I asked a lady and I was like, the, the person working there, I was like, hey, do What's you have any like- What's going on? do you have any normal beer? And she's like, Oh, the beer's over there. And I was like, yeah, no, but like, that's all like, like, do you have like real beer? And she's like, that is real beer. They don't know the difference. Oh man. A lot of them. Those poor bastards. But all that to say you into brewing is operating a pretty amazing operation in a state that they can barely sell their own product. Um, but at that time when I was there over the summer, I came across their hop nosh IPA and uh several of their yeah. other beers and they became kind of a staple for me i mean i was drinking a lot of you into that summer and they're they're a great brewery uh founded in 1993 in salt lake city their first he- uh, kegs hit the market in february they moved to a new facility in 2000 they have grown to become one of the top 50 craft breweries in the united states they also initiated a barrel aging program in 2009 which makes them real in my book. Yeah, which which puts them on the map. It's like, well, you know, we're, we're in Utah and, you know, people start to walk away. We have a barrel aging program. Everybody turns around. Now nah, we're oh, talking. No, you've caught my great. attention. They also bought and demolished a church in 2012 <laughs> to make way for a 34,000 square foot packaging facility. So they bought this church just south of their brewery, demolished it. And now they package beer there. I, I don't. I'm not particularly religious myself, uh, but that makes me hear angels singing behind me. That's beautiful. That's that I could cry. Um, yeah, and I love – you can read this quote about why – or, or <laughs> what was on the site about it, but I think this is just genius. Go ahead. The brewery, yeah, the brewery said, considering Benedictine monks were the first people to brew beer, we think they'd be okay with it. I mean, why wouldn't they be? You know, I mean, it makes total sense. The brewery also does a lot in the way of sustainability. Um, they were, I, they're, they're, they were the first one hundred percent wind powered business in Utah in the state. They went one hundred percent wind powered in two thousand one, which is, I mean, two thousand one is that's just er, like now it's like obvious, like everyone's kind of doing sustainability and and right, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. But in 2001, that was early in that curve uh, right. to go. Uh, their operation con- runs completely on sustainable energy. Um, they wrote on the website, including the brewery's boom box. Um, so that's some 2001 language for you they right there. They just have one giant boom box that's powering throughout the entire facility. Yeah, and now they have uh, solar panels on the roof. Um, so through wind and solar, they they fun- that's how they power... Their entire brewery, they are completely uh, sustain using sustainable energy. So, big part of their brewery identity, which we have seen with a lot of breweries, but again, uh, this has been a part of their legacy since two thousand one, which is just, um, just pretty cool. Uh, and in pretty- two thousand and five, uh, they launched the Four Plus Brewing Company, which is basically an offshoot brand focused on. Just the elemental process of beer. Their logo is the four main ingredients of beer. Their logo is the four main ingredients of beer? Um, Their logo, yeah. So does any of that include corn syrup? Uh, No, it does not. Shots fired, Molson Coors. Anyway, you into? (laughs) Back to it? (laughs) Uh, Monkshine and Wildfire, now known as Wild, are born paving the way for this new line. And I wasn't able to find too much information on it, but launching Four Plus Brewing Company out of another brewing company is really cool, really awesome to see. And they've got quite a lot of beers um, in the line now. So hats off to them for really, uh, you know, keeping the movement going, not just with their own facility, but with others. Um, And then one other thing I wanted to talk about very quickly was in 2010, they installed a -a one-of-a-kind Italian bottling line custom built to bottle, cork, and cage 750 milliliter size bottles of beer and the quote unquote crooked line is born. 
this hit me especially because you know i'm italian but these specialty beers are basically crafted in limited batches um they're different a little bit different from the traditional styles and uh local artists are commissioned to design the label for each release they're doing something right which is why they're on the list of one of the top 50 breweries in the united states and probably the biggest brewery craft brewery in utah i Coors is there Coors is there so mm, we can't say that they're the biggest brewery in utah but they're 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 probably they're one of if not the biggest craft brewery in Utah. They can go um, toe to toe. Let's drink more of their beers. I am moving on to the Doobie Imperial Doobie. Black IPA. Doobie spelled D U B H E. Imperial Black IPA. This uh has astronomical amounts of hops aligning with roasted malts to create an IPA brewed with hemp seed as well uh the brewery boasts flavors of coffee vanilla and pine shining bright uh abv we got 9.3 percent ibus 100 that's fun we've got an srm at 65 i to my eye it's just it's 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 very black i mean it doesn't look like a coffee stout uh, but it I looks, think that yeah, has to do from my uh, eye looking very, very dark, dark brown. Yeah. I mean it's it's very brown to the It point looks bold black. as hell. You can't see and through the it. Bitter, I'll say that. Bitters are a hundred, like that's that sounds cool. Uh the head did not retain very much. It's just got a ring around the glass, but there's a good amount of lacing in there. Like it looks nice and sticky. Uh, Beer Advocate users gave it 92, Untapped gave it 3.82, and the fellows over at Beer Connoisseur also gave it a 92. They chose to categorize this, going back to your question before, as a specialty IPA, considering it a hybrid between a double IPA and a black IPA. Now, uh, I am drinking this out of a snifter glass. It says beer bar on it. I stole it from Ty Burrell's bar in Salt Lake City, Utah, bar x uh, i'm not bragging about that nor am i proud no, about that is. i don't he, remember making that decision it. but i know i did do it i liked the probably glass. wasted i liked the glass and uh i'm taking this maybe <laughs> <laughs> i want this for my house maybe Just walked the, outside with it maybe he they'll be the to ones pay. to sue us <laughs> yeah there we go they'll be we like did. we're i knew we were missing a glass we only have 499 <laughs> we do get sued but it's not for any of the content we've ripped no, off it's, it's for <laughs> that glass you took years ago i love this glass and it just it, i felt like i needed to tell people about it because it came from salt lake city i was probably drinking you into out of this glass before i probably, put it in my yeah. bag so on the nose it looks very rich yeah it's nice and aromatic like the hops mm. hit you uh there is like a a, again a dark sweet thing like whatever it was that was in the back of that last beer is like up forward like front and center in this one like the, that licorice nice. anise uh like dark fruit fig flavor hits on the nose it's so interesting i don't i it, it's great because we, i don't think we've had other beers like this where it's like it's dark as hell but it's sweet at the same time yeah, I I get I get plum, I get dark fruit, I get booziness for sure. Like you get you know that there's booze in there. It smells like a like a sticky double. Um I don't get a whole lot of the malt profile. Like I'm not really sm- at least on the nose, I'm not smelling a whole lot of uh of like bread or anything like that. Uh the grain bill does include chocolate, midnight, wheat, C40 malts and hemp. And there is a dankness to this. Whether that's mm. related or not, I have no idea. But there is Anytime a... Anytime I hear somebody say that, it always just sounds like a slang to me. It's... Like, yo, this shit's dank. <laughs> it's... Like, well, that's it's like all I hear. What we talked about with, with resin. You know how I talked about, like, that smell that just, like... It's a resiny thing that's just, like, sticky sweet mm. and kind of fills your right. nose. That is in this beer for sure. The hops... Uh, include Falconer's Flight, Bravo, and CTZ hops. And if it's okay with you and the people at home and the God above me, I'm going to taste it now, okay? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, go. (laughs) I just wanted to bother you. So it's made with hemp. So, I mean, are you about to get really relaxed? Like, 
Are you about to get in your head? The motorcycle gang is back, and they want to know how you feel about this beer. So I think you should tell them and me what you're tasting. I am tasting a lot. Um, okay, the hoppiness is very present, and what I love about it is that it's a classic hoppiness. It's bitter. It's mm. bitter, and it's sticky, and it's dark. It is not citrusy or juicy. There's no citra hops. In- Look, I love a citra hop, a juiciness as much as the next guy. Uh, it's a very prevalent style right now, but... Um, I just I love beers like this that take me back to sort of a a classic bitter kind of West Coast IPA flavor. So so that's mm. that's first of all. Um, but there's also a the 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 grain bill comes through on the taste. Like I mentioned that there are chocolate malts in there. I'm tasting some of that now. I'm starting to get a little bit of like lingering coffee flavors, a little bit of chocolate flavors, like the stuff that would label you know coming from the black lager into a black IPA, like the stuff that makes right. this a black IPA and not a double IPA. Uh, I am starting to taste that a little bit um, for sure. Is it chocolate in a glass or is it like the complete opposite? It's not. I mean, if I had to, chocolate in a glass to me reminds me of like the founder's breakfast stout or like, like, so it's not that it's bit because the, the hops are, are there first. Like the chocolate is there. Um, kind of in the back of my mouth or towards like the mid to back of my palate. Uh, but so the first thing that coats your tongue is the hoppiness, the stickiness. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's hoppy first. And then the, the chocolate, like all that stuff is, is sort of on the back side of it. Um, the body is medium to full bodied. Uh, it is surprisingly creamy. Uh, the carbonation is on the lower side. It's luxurious. It's got a bite to it for sure. It's a slow sipper. Uh, like with the lager, we were talking about how crushable it is, how sessionable it is. You don't want to crush your session. This you will, uh, how is this beer in the weather you're currently experiencing? Cause it's like, it's hot in New York. I can only imagine how hot it is in LA. So, I mean, is this, this, I'm, I'm going to assume this is not a summer beer. No, this is a warming beer for sure. I mean, it's more like, it's more luxurious than that. I mean, I, you know me, I love these kinds of beers. So I am not someone who like can stay away from it like during the summer. But I mean, I'm not going to want to like take my shirt off and go running <laughs> <laughs> or go sit on the beach. But I can't do those things. And I keep my apartment very cold. So it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's like you're in the winter. Yeah. There um, there's just, there's a lot of flavor going on here. Um and it's sort of a, a, a delightful mixture of bitter and sweet. Um, the name of this beer, the Doobie, as I said, D-U-B-H-E. Doobie. Uh, it's a combination of D-U-B for double IPA and then the H-E for hemp. Because, again, it is re- brewed with real hemp seed that does come through in the flavor. Um, and this beer won a gold medal at the 2012 North American Beer Awards in the Cascadian style dark ale category. Wow. I think this beer is delicioso. In fact, I would possibly go so far as to say they're magically delicious. <laughs> yeah. I would say that. When you sip it and you put it down, I don't know how to say this except to say there's like there's there's it tastes like weed. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little, there's a little flavor of weed. Like if you, I, I don't know how else to put that. Uh, it's like I've had like, um, like if if anybody's into like CBD oils or anything, they will understand this. Like I've had some of that where you like put it on your tongue and like it's basically uh, just like hemp yeah. extract with the CBD in it, uh, and it tastes like that, like that lingering like. Is that weed? Like that flavor is is a part of this beer. And so it's more complex than just your standard double IPA. Like if you get this beer, you are getting a boozy beer. You're getting what you want from a double IPA, but there's more going on there in terms of like a, a dark flavor, um, a bitter flavor, a lot of resin, a lot of earthy herbal things going on that mm, I... Nice. Uh, really enjoy what I wouldn't give for like 
in in a in a my beer we get to the fun section of the pod of this episode and you're just like all right so we 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 got what what, what are we doing we have <laughs> I would kill for that. just completely baked by the end of this. Just, it's just so out of it. You don't know where you are. Is it? Is it my turn? Uh, I think. I think you should drink. I don't like well, to drink doctor's alone. Doctor's orders. <laughs> um, I am drinking the Detour Double IPA. It is a a uh, Imperial slash Double. Um, the quote from the website is: Our trailblazing Double IPA hauls a bold hop profile featuring heavy pine orange rind, and guava with a sweet malty finish. A hoppy adventure that finishes dry. Big in alcohol and character. Oh boy. I'm excited. Oh boy. These are the beers they brew in secret that they can't sell in the state of Utah. Yeah, for real. But hey, listen, you can brew in secret all you want. I'll pick it up in New York exactly. every single time. Um, this is coming in at 9.5%. IBUs of 96. The SRM chart... We're looking at a 19, I would say maybe even like a 20, 21, 22-ish. Very dark Ooh, yeah, bronze in color. Um, very hazy. Um, can't really see through it, which is interesting. Uh, Beer Advocate gave it an 86. Untapped gave it a 3.8. And Steven, guess what the beer connoisseurs gave it? Did they give it a 92? They gave it a 92. Now All three to- beers. <laughs> we had... I'm starting to question their process. They're just like, yeah, 92. Well, yeah, I mean, hey, what listen, did they, they give Dos Equis? They gave that a 75. <laughs> they didn't even bother with that. They um, gave that a 29. They they didn't even. They just knocked it over and <laughs> poured it into a plant. They said corn syrup. What the fuck? And then they moved on. <laughs> Take that, Molson Coors. Go ahead. Corn syrup. Oh my god. Ew. Right? Ugh. Exactly. Uh, Beer Connoisseur, the judges, they judged it as a double IPA. Um, they described it as a meddling, mel- I'm sorry, meddling, a melding of heavy malt and moderate bittering that just balanced very nicely. A well made beer. On the nose? Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Piney, hoppy. This this is this is gonna be a I, I read somewhere it was described as a hop bomb so we'll see if that plays up. Isn't that um, great when def- you take a smell of it and it just hits you in the face and you're just like oh yes yeah. this yes. and you kept you kept mentioning the resin this smells like a six point resin to be honest with you it's I'm hoping it's gonna be a different flavor but I right off that. the bat that's what immediately what I'm thinking of um, getting a little bit of citrus which I always love. Getting like a floral sort of aroma bouquet. to it, a bouquet of roses, if you will. <laughs> um, Happy Mother's Day. You know, Day. it's got the citrus, a uh, little bit of that caramel uh, smell to it. I'm definitely getting the nutty sense of it, as described. Um, very small head retention. A um, uh, little bit of lacing sticks to the glass runs down pretty quickly um this beer was made with bravo citra and simcoe hops and then for the malts like uh your beer it's made with the c41s and munich malts uh there's no hemp in this one so uh can't meet you there but uh riding that train alone guess guess so um here goes nothing yeah so remember earlier when i said hop bomb that's what you got? Yeah. This is not for the light at heart beer drinkers. It's it's interesting because I'm not getting many flavors because it is so hop forward and so strong. De- it definitely tastes like a 9.5. This is a, this is another, like you said about yours, this is a sipper. This is not a crusher. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's definitely very carbonated. Um, it's, it's very strong, strong mouthfeel. It really like... I don't know how else to say it. It makes you like pay attention. It wakes you up as it knocks Does you down. Does that sound weird? Um, I think that you're saying that it's very, it's just like a burst of flavor is what it sounds like to me, which is how it, I feel about <laughs> mine and about the six point resin. That's like my, uh, it isn't, it isn't though. That's what's crazy. Like there isn't a lot of like, okay. 
yes, there's a lot of flavor, but there's it's flavor on the hop process, the hop like forwardness. Like you're not like I smell citrus, you're not gonna taste citrus, at least for me. Mm. You know, like you're not gonna like be able to like, oh, I'm I'm picking out orange and lemon and grapefruit and blah blah blah. You'll smell that, but you'll taste like, damn, this is a strong ass beer. It's hazy mm. as hell, and it's just like it's it's not a uh like New England IPA per se. No. It's not citrusy, juicy. It's more of well, a it's a hot bomb. I mean got a little bit of juiciness flavor. It's 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 got some sweetness now that I've tasted it for the third or fourth time. I mean but yeah, it's very like it's it's gonna make your tongue tingle a little bit, but there's nothing wrong with that. Um definitely full body bodied, like I said. It has some awards. Uh, 2011, it won gold medal in the Australian International Beer Awards for Ale Package Department, and also in 2011, the bronze medal for the North American Brewers Association for the Imperial IPA. 2012, it won the gold in the Denver International Beer Awards for a double slash Imperial IPA, and in 2014, the silver medal for the Australian International Beer Awards for Outer Packaging. I love that there's an award for packaging. And Uinta has great packaging. I mean, you mentioned that with the black lager a little bit, but that they, they have do, a, yeah. It's a can. I mean, the the black lager, not the ones we're drinking now, are this it's just like a black and white can that just stands out to it's you. It's just yeah. Anytime I see Uinta, I always see the black lager and it's like they say on the site, you know, it's it's easy to pick out cuz it's just right there and it's staring at you in the face. Oh boy. I'm I'm feeling warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> we are both drinking beers from their year-round selection because that's what we could find. But they do have a lot more to offer at the brewery. They have, uh, I mean, we've already mentioned their uh, Crooked line, but they have uh, year-round, they have seasonal releases, they have a Crooked line, they have limited releases, and they have a Brett line. So there's plenty more to offer at Uinta beyond what we're drinking now and what you can normally find um, in there. They've got a lot of year-round options, and I've, yes. I've, I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like many of the breweries we've studied or that I've heard about, their year-round section is not always the largest. You can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but like Uinta's got like, there's like, you know, I would, I, I'm not going to count it, but I mean, there's like, 14, 15 beers here. Well, yeah, and it's wild to see, like, uh, I mean, like, the Doobie was not originally part of their year rounds, but people liked it so much that they right. they included it there. But it's wild to see, like, their uh, summertime, anytime lime pilsner. That's a very specific kind of beer, and yet it's part of their year round. I mean, a, a pilsner makes sense, but a, a lime pilsner um is very specific but they have that year round they have pale ales galore they have different kinds of ipas they have uh they've, half of ice. they've they got a new they've got a new seasonal release it's called the birthday suit 2020 tart ale mm-hmm. i don't know how to feel about that i feel like i personally wouldn't like that but i could see how that could be a fun but it's it's summary it's right. It's definitely yeah, a summary well, the, option. The, the artwork is two people playing in a pool, so I would hope so. They have a Rise and Pine Hoppy Dark Ale, which is a seasonal winter ale that I have had. Um, oh, my in God. In their Crooked line, the one that's listed in there now is this Pina Colada Milkshake Pale Ale. I was just about to mention that. Pina Colada Milkshake Pale Ale. I'm for I, it. I'm, I'm wet and wild. <laughs> I would like some. And and they're I like how their logo is kind of like a compass. That's yeah, they really have great artwork going on. Uh, they have so they have a lot to offer at the brewery. Um, they have a tap room where you can get a lot of this stuff on tap. Also, food. Um, of course, you know if you're in Utah and you're trying to go to UN to uh, you know look up if they're open or not because social distancing. Blah blah blah. But Ugh. they do have a tap room. They do have food. They do have a lot of this stuff on tap available to you and. Uh, Definitely worth a visit. They are also currently distributing to about 32 states. Um, so if you're in New England, uh, m- much of the Deep South, Alaska, or Montana, you're out of luck. But the rest of the country, you can get your hands on it. I I know I always shit on Montana, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. I heard recently that Montana has, like, I, 
I don't know the exact number, but it was like a couple hundred cases of COVID to like the rest of the nation's like thousands per state. Yeah. And so they're moving to open up. So I, I, so I know I always say there's no reason for Montana, but now I'm starting to think I should move to Montana. <laughs> Mo- Montana on the hot podcast has become like the Meg <laughs> Griffin of family guy. Like we just keep shitting on it. Like we need to, we need to do like a Montana beer episode just to get, it's credit back up you, so people of montana don't come and kill name us. name a montana beer the montana pale ale sequester listener and i know i could google it but that's not the point listeners if you know a montana beer that's distributed widely that we can get our hands on email us let us know we'd be happy to stop shitting on montana i don't know anything about montana we probably except still will, but that they don't have a lot of coronavirus and we should we could maybe move there we need to go uh do we though do we actually we need to go but before we do i'm gonna just bring up what caught my eye real quick and that is please do have you heard of the murder hornets okay listen i've heard of the murder hornets i've heard two sides i've heard the side from you which is like we're all gonna die and the other side which is like it's not a big deal we know how to fend them off please teach me about okay we're not all gonna die but murder hornets are um, these like insanely, they lo- they're enormous hornets. And what they do, they're Asian, the actual name for them is like the Asian giant hornet or something like that. Mm. And they they are from like Japan or some, I'm not entirely sure where, but they're from over there. And they murder bees honeybees in insane ways so what happened is this this oh beekeeper God. i think it was in like washington state somewhere he uh came out to his beehive and he just found like he's like looking at the ground and he's like why is the ground all dark like what's going on with the grass and he shows up over there and there's oh like God, dead bees. bee bodies just all over oh the fucking God. ground and they were all decapitated which by the way how you tell that a bee is decapitated i have no idea and (laughs) and, uh, i would hope a beekeeper would have enough knowledge to figure it out so all these bees are decapitated he comes across these decapitated Mm -hmm. bee bodies on the ground because that's how murder hornets operate and they take the thorax of the bee so the chest back to their hives and that's what their young feed on okay oh my god so that's insane and they're also that's huge what they're like huge they're like enormous like google it and you can see pic- pictures of murder I, hornets like in people's hand and it's like the size yeah. of a palm like it's fucking yeah massive. i've seen i've seen like a picture of a dude like holding one and i was just like that's got to be photoshopped it's and it was so I was, creepy i was like yikes so they like in the middle of the night invade these hives and they launch attack like insane Anarchy. invasion attacks on these bees oh like God. and i'm listening to this story and it's just like gruesome and gr- i'm like what the fuck and then okay and then um somebody asks okay well ha- ha- you know like obviously japan do? still has honey because honey is a big part of the american economy but also honeybees are important because like honey farmers- yeah honeybees are like it save the honeybees. That's all I've been hearing the past couple of years. Well, honeybees are important because it's like, do you like apples? Do you like like a honeybee pollinates that? Do you like right. nuts? A honeybee has to pollinate that crop. Like they need honeybees to pollinate the crops that make the food that we eat. Right. So, uh, somebody was like, "Well, you know, Japanese honeybees still exist. Like there's still honey and things there. Like how do they deal with it? Well, those bees have evolved." to be able to fight murder, murder hornets. And I'm going to tell you how they do it. So the Japanese honeybees, when a murder hornet attacks, attacks their hive, they surround the honeybee, or the murder, Strength they numbers. surround the murder hornet, like a bunch of them mm-hmm. surround it, like into this little fuzzy ball. And mm-hmm. then the heat of their body over like 20 minutes, 40 minutes, two hours, like it, over time, cooks the murder hornet to death in an oven of honeybees 
Oh, that's hilarious. I was listening to the story and I out loud went, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> what? Are you shitting me? Like, not they only is just there. cook it to death? Not only is there bee on bee decapitation, but now these Asian bees have figured out a way to join as a group, create a little oven ball of beeness, and then cook (laughs) the murder hornet to death. So they're like, all right, this this is how we're going to do it. Everyone huddle up. This is what you do. You you see a murder, murder hornet, just bear hug it. All of us will jump on it, and eventually... He'll cook and die. I don't know why this isn't national news on everyone's Facebook page. I don't know why everyone isn't talking about this. This is they insane just hold on for to me. Your life? They all just aren't they afraid of getting decapitated? Look, I'm not an expert. Don't ask me why. Like I don't understand if all these bee bodies are surrounding you and you're a hornet that's enormous. Why can't you sting one and get? I don't know. I have no well, answer. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I have well, no answer. The other thing, like I said, strength in numbers. Like there's probably so many that they can't move. Like. I don't know. Like, like, okay, so if you're a murder hornet and there's like 30 honeybees just holding on to you and you can't move, you're done for. I don't know. All I know is that American honeybees don't have this ability. They haven't evolved to that point. Asian honeybees can do this. Somehow this murder hornet got here. We don't have time to get into that. But the fact, like when I heard that, I was just like, this, that is, that's, that's, some shit. that's better than a lot of TV shows on Netflix right now. I don't know. <laughs> That's a that's a uh, cable Dude, drama. I, they just need to be handled, but it's just like I <laughs> they someone talk, just needs to do something. They interviewed one guy who like was like you know a beekeeper had been stung multiple times in his life, like went out to like fight the murder hornets, and he was going in the middle of the night to like some murder hornet nest to like oh God. kill him. Godspeed. And they somehow like he awoke them. And they stung just, the shit out of this guy. He said it I was, was just like, about to say. He said it was like having shards of glass shoved into his leg over and oh over my again. God, I, w- I was going to ask. So if you get stung by one, like you'll live, right? It just it'll yeah, just hurt he, like a bitch. He'll live. He goes. Well, I woke up the next day and my leg was, hurt, and I thought, what life? I mean, like, what kind of life are you living that you just like got stung? Over and 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 over again by murder hornets, and then you just went to bed. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, exactly. Like I'd be up he was, all night. He was probably like, "Well, it's Tuesday." Like <laughs> that's nothing to him. I don't understand how beekeepers just work regularly because, like, I get it. They have the whole suit oh, on, but that's the other thing. For the this love guy, of god. this guy that got stung like that was wearing his beekeeping suit and also kevlar and also multiple layers of clothes and they stung through all that shit no Uh uh-uh nope pack it in no (laughs) don't get stung by one hornet i'm going to i'll i'll i will use a human baby as a shield it'll hurt but i'm just saying actually do that i just wanted to bring attention to the Mostly the Japanese murder system of their like it's not even the hornets I'm worried about. It's the fact that these Japanese honeybees have figured out how to cook the murder hornet to death with their bodies. Do they like eat it afterward, or do they just like kick it? No, to the side they of the just road? kill it like, and then they go on with their life. They don't want to eat that. It must be tough being a bee. I we do. need to go. We got to go. Yeah. We gotta, these people There's have too much, to do. too much bee talk. I, we, <laughs> I love honey just as much as the next person, but for the love of all things holy and moly, I want to finish these beers. I want to thank all of our listeners again for listening to us. Like, comment, subscribe, and all the social media. Send us an email. Uh, if you live in or know someone who lives in Montana, uh, send us some beer suggestions so we can stop shitting on them and we can get them back on our good side. And I want to say another thank you to Mickey down in Australia, the Hop Cartel. Mickey. Check them out on Instagram. Check out their podcast if you're into home brewing especially. Uh, and if you're into fun glassware, Mickey, send me some of your glassware because your pictures we are beautiful. We will. And thank you for hitting us up. Uh, guys, once again, we thank you. And we'll see you for round 21 when the podcast turns of legal drinking age. B-movie now in theaters. Go see it. 